hello, hello. Well, I got six cells done. Now, now I'm going to show you how to solder each cell uh, together. And uh, since the uh, pane is three feet long, which means we can have six cells in each row, and we're going to have, let's see, it'd be one, two, three, four rows. So I got enough cells to do row one. I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to need to do. Uh, for starters, the last cell in your row, you don't do the full length tab. You do a short tab. Um, I'm probably going to have to trim those down a little, little more because once you get this one's going to be at the end of the string, you're going to have to connect the bus wire up. If the tabs are too long, they'll go out of the frame of, of your uh, your pane or whatever you're working on. So then we're going to have bus wire going across these tabs down to the next row to interconnect to the next row. Um, so uh, why don't we just take a quick look at how that is going to happen. Actually first I should make sure the camera is aimed so you guys can see. I'm just going to back it up a little bit here. And now when you flip your cells over, be very, very gentle. Otherwise, this is what happens. And let's see, this one is going to be the cell that's at the end of the pane. So you need to be extremely careful. Now remember, the, uh, the blue side, the side facing the sun, is the, is the uh, negative, and the back side here is the positive. So you have your cells, your cells from the front side of one, or your tabs from the front side of one cell, will be going to the back side of the next cell, and then we're going to be tabbing them together. I'm going to get everything in order, and then I will restart the video. Well, I went ahead and I soldered the uh, six cells together. Uh, you pretty much you solder them the same as uh, you do the front side, but this time instead of um, instead of just tabbing, uh, you're taking the wire from the underside of one cell, and it goes up to the back side of the next so from the front to the back front to the back because that's going from negative to positive negative to positive negative to positive so on and so forth now uh, you just can't forget you have to have a little bit of extra wire towards the back so you can connect your your bus uh, your bus wire uh, this is going to be our bus wire and you also have to have some tabs at the front so you can connect a bus wire only this time in the, on the end this is so this is going to be the end of the string or the beginning of the string so we're starting off the top here with positive we're ending the bottom with negative so we'll have to have a bus bar up here is what we connect to our positive cable going to either our solar charge controller or inverter and then down on this end because remember this is negative now at the end here so we'll have our bus bar there and then we're going to start doing the exact same thing all the way up the other side and uh, so this is going to be going negative right here it's going to be connecting to the positive side of the next cell here and by the time we get to that end right where that rosin pen is right here is going to end with positive move over to here to the negative end of row number three we're going to be going all the way down right where the soldering iron is now we're going to end right there once again with negative we we'll have another bus bar going to here and we'll be going all the way up and ending um, because this this row will start at the bottom as 
negative and will end, or as positive, and will end right here with negative. And so in conclusion of that, this is the positive end of the string, this is the negative end of the string. So all in all, by the time all is said and done, we're going to have a total of 12 volts, give or take a few, uh, with the positive and negative. And then we'll run a wire right to the, about the center spot. And um, we'll have the, the wires, the uh, positive and negative wires, go out. And we have our silicon sealant. Uh, I picked this up. This was about five bucks. It's clear. Uh, it has special, um, it's for outdoors. Um, it even says sealing gutters, flashing, downspouts, and other surfaces. Superior adhesion to metal, wood, masonry, and vinyl. And we got our metal and the sealing up here. Weatherproof and watertight seal. Keyword, watertight. We do not want water getting in our solar panel. Permanently flexible and non-shrinking. You want permanently flexible and non-shrinking because as the seasons change, when the sun comes up in the morning, the panel's going to get warm. At night, it's going to cool down. It's going to be flexing. You want to make sure your sealant can flex along with that. And non-shrinking, some sealants will actually shrink and then thus peeling themselves away. <coughs> and we don't want that either. Now, you guys might have noticed I was having a little difficulty uh, making my soldering points the other day. Well, I didn't listen to, them, to many other people's advice and I had bought a cheap Harbor Freight soldering iron. Well, number one, it was uh, the one I had and I can't even find it on their website now. It was labeled because apparently it's been discontinued. It was labeled at about 40 watts. It was only drawing, I, I plugged it in meter, it was only drawing about half that, so about 20 watts. So number one, it wasn't getting hot enough. Number two, despite not getting hot enough, the handle had melted, and the electronics on the inside actually melted their way through the handle. And so last night, or actually two nights ago, I went out and I picked up this one by Lenk. Lenk, Len, Lenk, Lenk, W-L, Lenk, however the heck you pronounce it. And made in USA. It is 40 watt. Um, well, it's similar design, so I can see where Harbor Freight copied theirs from. It's actually quite a bit more durable. The handle stays cool instead of warm. And this one has absolutely no problems melting the solder, it even comes with a five year warranty. Uh, now the only problem I did have, oh, and it was only a few dollars more. Um, now I bought the soldering kit from Harbor Freight, which had different, a couple different tips in it. I bought that for, um, oh, what was it, eight ninety nine, I think. Well, this was just eight ninety nine for just the soldering iron and uh, a little wire holder. Keep the tip, the hot tip off, whatever you're working on. So yes, it was a little more pricey. The same soldering iron at Harbor Freight that was in the kit, only not in kit format, was $3.99. So you're talking four uh, $5 more than, than this, just the soldering iron or same price as their little kit they had. It's well worth it. I should have listened to what I was told by other people. A number of people told me, when it comes to a de uh, soldering iron for a decent project, don't cheap out. Just get a decent one to begin with. They're not that expensive. Should have listened. My bad. Um, Weller is another great brand, but uh, I couldn't find anybody locally that was actually still selling Wellers. Uh, I have a Weller in my toolbox that I use for minor electrical repairs on motorcycles. Works great. My problem is that one's only 25 watt. Definitely not hot enough for this project. Uh, the problem is with the temperature as you're pulling the iron across your tabbing wire to spread the solder, the iron will lose heat faster than it gains it. 
and with a lower wattage, by the time you get to the end, the end of your tab wire, it's lost so much heat, it's not able to properly melt the solder any longer. So I'm going to say it again. Get a decent quality soldering iron. Now, there was just one problem with the soldering iron, is uh, even though it has an interchangeable unscrewable tip, uh, no one locally had tips for it. Go figure. I'd have to go to the uh, Lank W L Lank website, made in Kingston, North Carolina, to be able to get the, the tip I needed, which was a, a chisel tip instead of uh, instead of the uh, pencil tip. Uh, my solution was I unscrewed the tip, put the tip in a vice grips, and uh, went to our grinding wheel and just ground ground uh, uh, the chisel tip onto there. You want a chisel tip because that's easier and flatter to be able to pull the solder down the wire. Um, you don't, I, you really, I didn't really have to do that, but it does make soldering quite a bit easier. So now I'm going to move the camera just a bit. Don't get too motion sick. And I'm going to connect this bus bar up. Now, I see where people solder the backs first and then flip it over and solder the fronts. Um, I was wondering why, because then you have to flip the whole thing over. Uh, the way I did it, uh, I soldered one, all the tab on, then I'd flip the cell over so the back side was up. Solder, flip it, solder, flip it. Just put them in a line and went down the row soldering the wires on properly. Now, because it's face down on my nice uh, it was clear. People keep touching it. I don't know why. People always have a habit of touching nice, clean, clear glass and putting their fingerprints all over. But uh, now, since it's face down already, I won't actually have to lift these up. Uh, I'll be able to just keep soldering, add on what I need. And uh, when I'm done, I can put my backing on here, seal it up with the, or put the silicon, put my backing on, and we are done panel done. And uh, I know I'm not near that stage yet, but I have come up with a few very low cost ideas for mounting so that way it can mount the panels on, on some sort of rack in my backyard. Now, the positive side and the negative side, I put a I, I left a little bit extra tabbing wire on them as uh, since this is my first string, I wanted to see how everything fit together. And you can, it's always easier to cut just a tiny bit of wire off than it is to add a tiny bit of wire. So I put a little too much, no big deal. A little bit of flux. Tab and spot. Now this is going to be my first bus wire that I've done, so I'm still still working on these quite right here. Hot. Wow, that bus wire got hot quick. There we go. I'll connect it up. Perfect. There we go. Oh, another important thing is make sure you keep your tip clean. Use an old, old damp cloth. 
clean tip for some reason attracts the solder much better. And there we have it. I have one row of cells complete. And uh, I suppose you all can, uh, for the most part, understand. Um, well, I should have left that bus wire until I was completely, I had all the rest of my rows done. Would have been a little easier because I have limited workspace. I'll just have to sit on the other side now and work from that direction. But uh, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tab, let's see, it'd be 6, 12. Sorry, three more rows. Yeah, 6, 12, 18. I got to do 18 more cells. And I'll, I'll get those bus wires all connected up. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, and it looks like we're going to have a thunderstorm here, so I got to... Oh, looks like my iPhone's overheating too. <laughs> go figure. I suppose it's only like 96 degrees out right now, and I'm only working with a 1,000 degree soldering iron so I guess when over uh, iPhone overheats I should probably just call the video quits and uh, there we go um, so we got uh, the bus bar recap real quick we got the bus bars connected and we got the fronts tabbed to the back side so we got a whole string so that's six cells so we have three volts three volts worth of cells right there at uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 watts. 30 watts times at three volts. That's a lot. It's a lot of wattage at such a low voltage. And uh, I'll let the shot clock run until 15 minutes, although it's probably going to look more than 15 minutes on your computers because I'm going to be merging two videos together for this segment. And um, uh, I'll have the rest of the cells tabbed and bussed together. And then we will connect up the uh, positive and negative wires. And then we will seal the panel to my plastic backing. Cheers!